Okay, uh, later on I'm going to steam these two uh, engines, both dating from 1949. On the left we have an SE1, and on the right we have its slightly larger brother, the, uh, the SE2. These uh, were most probably built at the Camden Street factory in central Birmingham. And they both got the later pressed steel engine frames, uh, or the long pressed steel engine frames as they're known as. These were cheaper to manufacture than the uh, the hot stamped brass variety, uh, so as to keep them at a competitive price point. Um, they still have the, the wonderful brass flywheels, and uh, essentially um, they were, uh, I'm just I'm trying to look up the sun here, uh, they were both uh, sort of uh, of the period where the, the engines were gradually moving into a more sort of rationalised sort of parts, cheaper parts, and um, I say they were uh, still very attractive engines even through their time. Um, we can see the SE2 actually features its own little regulator. Uh, that had disappeared from the SE1 by then, once we've got these longer engine frame types. Uh, you can also see that uh, it's got uh, its whistle as well, complete with little uh, sort of Bakelite plastic celluloid um, insulating handle. What you do also notice as well on these is the difference in the design of the the union nut on the steam pipes, and also the designs of the of the actual safety valves, um, which all signified maybe that the suppliers were, were chopping and changing at the time and uh, changing designs. Um, which is um, you know interesting little features that uh, you can pick up on from time to time. The SE2 has got its original feet on there. The SE1, I fear, has had new feet put on it at some point, but um, they, they do the job okay. Um, the SE2 has a three wick burner. The little SE1 has a two wick burner, uh, and it doesn't have, as you can see, uh, a threaded. Uh, brass nut to uh, to seal over the um, the actual opening to the to the reservoir. It probably had a rubber bung of some description in there. So anyway, so uh, say so both these engines sort of exhibit the uh, features that you would find in an engine at the time. So they've got sort of barrel pistons and um, obviously the flat bases. Uh, the 15 by 13 Meccano hull spaced SE2 base is exactly the same as the the, the SE2 prior to that, and uh, the 46 SE2 and also the uh, the SE4 as well. So um, there you have it, really, two really nice engines. They're still, you know, these are still around. You can still purchase them at uh, auction sites and um, at steam fairs and that. Um, good bo boxed examples get uh, good money. I mean, both these were not. I didn't break the bank buying these two, but the SE2 was uh, well into three figures because that came with all its instructions in its box as well. Um, the little SE1 was a little bit cheaper, um, but uh, say worthy additions to to any uh, mainboard collector's stable of engines. It's particularly if you're after all the the various iterations um, in terms of sort of flat bases, changes of flywheel, engine frame, and so on. I say they're both uh, in, presented in play worn condition, um, they haven't been refurbished in any way. The SE1 does have a replacement decal, which is um, uh, from one of my own range of decals I produce and uh, I'll be interested to see how that actually stands up to a little bit of heat on it as well. I mean they all burn off in the end but um, I'm hoping that won't be too bad anyway. Um, so there we have it. One other feature I should point out that um, uh, these particular engines had was the fact that they also had superheated steam pipes by then. You can see the, the pipe looping under the boiler. So there we have it. So um, I'm just going to get these two ready and uh, we'll see how they perform in a moment.